Welcome to the Play Spaces Transformed Program Overview. Here I would like to give you a sense of the steps we will be working through over the next months. Remember that each of our situations are unique, but we can all benefit from addressing each step as we go along. Some steps may require more work for you than other steps, just depending on which stage in the game you are. As we go through the following steps, please remain open. Go into each module unassuming and ready to uncover new insights. If you surrender to the process, you are more likely to tap into a place that you have not been before. Allow yourself time to absorb the information. Think about it when you're driving, folding laundry, or standing in line. Just give yourself time to process what you've heard and what we've talked about. And please don't be hard on yourself. Just know that you are open to a shift in perspective, and most of the time a shift does not occur overnight. With that being said, make sure to implement what you learn. Implementation does not have to be perfect, whatever that is, but it does need to occur. You only really learn by doing. And that's one of our main jobs here, to make sure that our ideas are getting out of our heads and into the hands of our kids. Anyone can dream, and many of us do. But what really counts here is the doing. You will always find yourself making changes and adjustments no matter what. So start experimenting sooner rather than later. Let's look at how I've broken down this process into seven steps and to keep in mind that our overall goal is to create aesthetically and purposefully designed play spaces that inspire both the child and the adult so the optimal state of learning can occur and more fun can be had. These steps are providing you with a framework and a system so forward movement is more doable, less overwhelming, and success is evident. So let's look at step number one. Look within. Before touching our existing environment, we must go through a reflective process. And that means asking ourselves a lot of questions. We begin here because in this program, our environment is an expression of who we are and what our beliefs and values are, especially with regards to young children. Step two, begin to simplify. Once we've dug deep into understanding ourselves and what we want to offer the children in our lives, we need to begin to simplify. In general, we all have too much stuff, too many ideas, too much information. When there is too much, it is challenging to have clarity or enough energy to move forward. We can become distracted, overwhelmed, drained, or even frozen. By removing excess, we create space for what really matters. Step three, present on purpose. Once we've reduced the amount of stuff, our toys and books, our choices, by cutting them in half, and then again, and even maybe once more, we can then be deliberate about how we present their options to them. We learn how to make the choices clear, enticing, and available. A large component of this step is understanding how and where to store all of our things. Step four. Consider materials versus toys. Once we've made our choices clear, available, and enticing, then we can take a closer look at what we are offering our children to play with. This is the time to see what additional materials we need to acquire to enhance the play experience. Here we also delve deep into the understanding of the play tray concept, working with unique combinations of sensory rich materials within a defined area.
Step five, know your resources. Knowing where to look when wanting to make purchases is half the battle. Here you will receive a list of go-to sources when needing non-toy items for your space. Also, we will work on developing a deciphering eye so you can walk into any store and find the treasure. Step six, find your rhythm. With predictability, children can relax and then therefore so can you. Here we take the time to examine the flow of our days and how to best incorporate our needs and desires into our busy schedules. Allocating time in the day for certain wishes creates a higher probability that they will occur. We will also examine the rhythm or rotation of materials so that this in of itself does not become overwhelming. And step seven, create your oasis. Tending to specific areas or elements of your environment is advantageous. But for implementation to be the most successful, the bigger picture needs to be addressed. There needs to be attention to details and overall mood. So we take a closer look at color, lighting, scent, and decor. So I hope you found this overview helpful and that you're pumped up and ready to make a difference in your life, your child's life, and perhaps in someone else's life that you haven't even met yet. So push up your sleeves and let's get to work. Your first step is found in module one. See you there.